Welcome to Amazing Business Radio with best-selling author and customer service and business expert, Shep Hyken. Shep will talk with some of the smartest thinkers in business to help make you more successful in your professional and personal life. This is Amazing Business Radio with Shep Hyken. Hello, everybody. It's Shep Hyken, and we are back with another episode of Amazing Business Radio. And this week, we're going to be talking with Alex Ross, who is the co-founder and chief operating officer of Higher Horatio. And the short version of what they do is essentially they are an outsourced operation for customer service and support and a few other processes that businesses have. Uh, I think we're going to really enjoy talking to him, not so much about what his business does, but how they go about it. Because I believe that the level that he is operating at is a gold standard in how to treat employees, not just in the type of business he's in, but in any type of business. All right, before the interview, a couple of quick announcements. If you've got an amazing story that you want to share or a question that you want answered, please reach out to me on any of the social media channels. I am everywhere, and I will respond either in that channel, in my newsletter, on this show, or on my TV show, which is Be Amazing or Go Home. And you can find episodes on Amazon Prime, Roku, and you can even go to uh, beamazing.tv. That's right, beamazing.tv. All right, let's talk to Alex Ross. Alex, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Well, we're going to be talking about, uh, and I love this idea, you have created a BPO. And first of all, before I get into this, I, I, I gave a little short intro on what you do, but give us your elevator pitch on what's happening at Higher Horatio. Yeah, definitely. So uh, many may not know the BPO space that well, but I think it can be explained in what we do just by saying, you know, we work with outsourcing specifically for startups to help them with their customer support, back office functions, and anything else that they really need to run their business that we view as not core to their um, business model. So at Horatio, we say, do what you do best, let Horatio do the rest. And so really we're partnering with technology firms, direct to consumer companies, fintechs, and really helping them take off the load of all of the things that you have to do as a business that aren't core to exactly what you're trying to achieve. And that may be customer success, that may be different tasks, different operations. Um, and that's really where we come in as a true partner and extension of their team to help them be able to scale more efficiently. All right, so I'm going to, I'm not going to push back. I'm not going to disagree. But I think that if a company, I think most companies would agree that customer service and support and now customer success, which is a really hot topic, is core to the success of a business. Yet at the same time, these companies want to outsource it. And if you think about it, when I'm calling a certain company and I'm talking to somebody on technical support, I may not actually be talking to an employee of that company, but a trained individual from a BPO, an outsourced subcontractor that is delivering customer service or other services on behalf of the company. So uh, I would hope that they would, and, and by the way, I have no objection to somebody going uh, because I I work with plenty of BPOs and outsourced customer support companies that do an amazing job for their clients. Because they realize, hey, you know, we've got to get, you know, we've got to be operational 24-7. And maybe our offices typically aren't there, but there are companies that will provide that service for us. That's part of what you do. Yeah, totally. And, and what I think you said is actually key to what we're trying to do is to bring in customer support and customer experience to actually be a core function of the businesses. I think a lot of the problems that we see is that we work with startups and that ranges all the way from pre-launch companies to companies, you know, planning to do an IPO or series C and D funding. One of the things that we see is that they've allocated so many of their resources to their marketing or building a product, um, whether it be tech or, you know, a consumer goods product. But a lot of the times they're not sure how to scale a customer experience organization, how to scale customer support. How do you get data from it? How do you use it to your advantage? And I think the age old, you know, when people think about customer support, they think about a cost center. Oh, I need to have somebody to respond to my customers and keep them happy. And now I think some of the smartest companies out there are really saying, how do I turn this into my advantage? 
how do I make a differentiated experience? And so that's what we're working with our clients on a lot is not only providing the teams that are handling the customer interactions, but working with them on helping design great customer interactions. How do you handle it? And I think unique to us is all of our clients are scaling their business very, very quickly. And scaling a customer service organization is really t difficult from a headcount perspective to an operations perspective to a right tech stack perspective. And that's where we come in to really help guide all three of those buckets so that as you scale your business, the experience that you have for your customers scales accordingly. Wow. Very interesting. And I love it that you you focused on a niche, which is the startup scaling up fast growth companies, because we talked to plenty of great companies, um, you know, I, I'm good. I consumer brands, for example, uh, and I work with uh, I would say they're competitors of yours, but they're competitors in a different space. And that, uh, you know, I, I go to these conferences where the clients of these BPO are major airlines, major consumer brands. And yet when you call, you're actually thinking you're talking to the company, you're actually talking to an employee of another company that's been properly trained. I should say, hopefully properly trained to give you yeah. the customer, the experience that you want. Um, gosh, uh, you caught me and I started to write something down and then you completely distracted me with something more uh, compelling. But uh, here, here's what I think is interesting and where I what I really want to get into today. And by the way, if you're listening to this and you're thinking this is all about call centers uh, and support centers, you are 100% wrong. That just happens to be the business that Alex Ross is in with Higher Horatio. We are now going to shift to talking about uh, how you take care of your employees because you've got a really unique business model that attracts the best talent and most importantly, it retains the talent in an industry that has incredible amounts of turnover, which I think is a real important thing. Oh, I know what it was. And I saw, I wrote my word cost. I think you said, I couldn't tell when you were talking about, you said call center or cost center. It didn't matter because most people view customer support as a mm -hmm. cost center for a company. Exactly. And I think that's a huge mistake. And I've been writing that, this year, probably more than ever, the smart companies are recognizing that the customer support world is actually great for attention and revenue generation. I just talked to, uh, uh, I was just at what's called CCW, Contact Center World. Or actually, it's called Contact Center Week, excuse me, in Las Vegas. Largest contact center uh, expo and conference in the world. And one of my friends and clients, we were having a great conversation. He said, Chef, in the next three to five years, I'm going to contribute a half a billion dollars to our bottom line. Now, that's not a huge percentage of the overall, but this is revenue that's coming from not a sale, but from a little additional growth from the support center person you know, bumping that customer up to another level or retaining that customer that was just getting ready to walk out the door. Yeah, exactly. And I think, you know, when you think about it, I think with retention has been one of the key factors. And I think when you talk about, you know, 2019, 2020, when the market was a little frothy and everybody just wanted to see top line growth, investors were saying, you know, what are your numbers? What have you been able to grow revenue at? And now we're in a market where investors are starting to look a little bit deeper, and especially with companies that are, you know, subscription services or have retention, starting to say, what are those numbers? How do you improve those? And some of the things that we're talking with our clients are small percentage changes in retention and reduction in churn can have huge impacts on valuation, on revenue, and customer lifetime value. And really that retention all starts with what's the customer experience and how can you optimize for it? And I think right now, a lot of companies are starting to say, okay, this is something I really need to focus on. And I really need to spend some time optimizing and putting the right people in the right place and scaling efficiently. Right. Two areas. I think number one is providing the right level of service retains and grows your customers. They don't churn as much. That's number one. Number two, providing the right experience internally, which is what I want to get into in just a few minutes, allows you to um, provide a better, more consistent experience because you're not constantly hiring and retraining people and putting um, you know, unseasoned pros 
out on the, that floor talking to the customers. And, and I believe the cost of, of training and hiring and that churn internally, oh my gosh, it's ridiculously expensive. And, and uh, so many companies are short-sighted and aren't paying their people a wage that makes them, and by the way, we're going to talk about this in a minute, Oh, not specific wages, but the idea of paying somebody that would get them to stop looking at the dollar and start saying, I really like the job. And then if you provide the job that's fulfilling for them, oh my gosh, you know, they got, it's a winning combination. And we're going to take a break in a moment, but I just want to say, I know everybody can't see this because this is an audio-based interview, but I am looking uh, at the background that Alex has, and this is what his latest office looks like. And I would say that in the height of the dot-com era, uh, the only thing, am I seeing a ping pong table back there? A pool table, oh, yeah. a foosball we've table? Got ping pong, pool tables, foosball, we've we've got it all. You've got, uh, I mean, you're creating an environment. It's just the lobby. An, an environment in the support or, or context in our world that I think uh, I've not seen something quite this nice I just love it. I love it. Let's take a quick break. When we come back, I want to talk about how that employee experience really impacts the bottom line of the company, both uh, the, the company that has its own contact center, as well as how it increases and enhances the experience for the outside customer. We are coming right back. This is Amazing Business Radio. We've been talking with Alex Ross, co-founder and chief operating officer of Hire Horatio. One of my favorite sayings is that customer service isn't a department. It's a philosophy. And it's a philosophy that must be embraced by everyone in the organization all the time, and that's 24-7. So if customer service is important to you, and I know it is, then you will love our virtual training, the ultimate on-demand customer service and experience training program that you can access anytime, anywhere. Now the course content applies to everyone, regardless of position and responsibility, from senior executives to the most recently hired and everyone in between. You'll discover tips, ideas, and strategies that won't cost your company a fortune, but will produce what I call moments of magic, those positive experiences, and it will happen at every level of your organization. So go to Customer Service VT. That's V as in virtual, T as in training. That's CustomerServiceVT.com. It's time to get customer focused. You're listening to Amazing Business Radio with best-selling author and customer service and business expert, Shep Hyken. We're back on Amazing Business Radio talking to Alex Ross of Higher Horatio. And let's talk about that employee experience. You are doing an amazing job of holding on to the best people. I also think you're attracting the best people. And it's not just because you have a ping pong table in the uh, cafeteria. Tell us what's going on with that. Yeah, definitely. So... I think when we started off this business, my, my partners, Jose and Jared, we wanted to figure out how can we be different? And we knew that we were trying to work with startups that were fast growing companies and scale with them. And we knew to do that, we had to attract the best talent that was out there in our industry. We simply couldn't settle for anything other than that because of the expectations. A lot of our clients are evaluating, should I build the team internally? Or should I work with a partner like Horatio? So we knew that that was one of the criteria that we had to satisfy. So we thought a lot about how do we get the best people? And you know what we did? We modeled it after some of the best companies in the United States on how they get their best talent. So I think paying above market is certainly something that we do. I don't think that that gets the job done entirely. What we've done is tried to combine a combination of really fulfilling work by partnering with really cool startups that are trying to solve problems, that want feedback from their team, that want to understand what's happening in the customer interactions, that want suggestions. And that leads to the type of work we're providing to be really interesting for them, keeping them engaged. Two, we've grown a lot. And so we offer a lot of really great growth opportunities for our team. A lot of our managers and directors that we have at the company started off as actual agents and representatives taking calls, answering emails. And you know the ones that outperformed are the ones at the top. And I think the last thing is how we've built the office culture and the environment. When you walk into our office, you would probably think that you've just stepped into Google. We have all of the different amenities that you can you know, ever imagine, right? From multiple game rooms to a state-of-the-art gym facility to daycare and a nursery for 
the moms that need to bring their kids to work. Um, and we have all the different events that are there too. You know, we're constantly planning of parties and get togethers and celebrations. And when you walk around the office, you know, we promote a, an area of, of wellness. The entire office has a track around it where you can take walking meetings. And so I get to the office, I take all of my first meetings on a walk. We have rubber floors that go around the entire facility. And that's how we take and we promote that. We promote a really healthy lifestyle. And so what we've seen is that this is not only great for Instagram and social media and helping us recruit the best people, but when we talk to the people on our teams, these are the reasons that they're staying, right? And the alternatives uh, you know, that they have are nowhere near the experience that they have. And what that allows us to do is build a community. Because at the end of the day, people want to be a part of something. They want to be a part of a mission. They want to be a part of a goal. And when you can facilitate the right environment and the right office structure, and then pair that with different groups of what people are interested in, like our book club or our music club, dance clubs, all of that together, you start to make it more than just work. You make it a community, you make it an environment that people want to be in. And that's what gives us some of the lowest you know, attrition rates in the entire industry and has allowed us to attract some really awesome talent that has grown with us and helped us deliver on behalf of the customers we have. Wow, it's fascinating. And I love what you're doing. You mentioned that you looked at companies in the US and that you modeled uh, what you're doing in your company after these best companies. Can you share with who some of those companies are and like what the features of those companies were that you uh, got excited about doing in your own business? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think if you walk into our office, the first thing you probably think of is Google uh, and some of their facilities. And in a former life, I actually worked in, in real estate and was part of helping build um, McDonald's headquarters in Chicago in the Fulton Market District. And when I remember walking in there, one of the things that stood out to me most was that they had this giant auditorium and they used it as a stairwell, but also as an auditorium. And we've modeled the exact same thing in our office where we can have an all hands meeting with, you know, three, 400 people in an auditorium. And, you know, that allows us to hold different meetings in a unique setting, right? But it also allows people to spend their off time there or their breaks there, sitting with different friends, people that they've met, communicating, doing work, taking calls. Um, and if you look at, you know, the lobby of our office, you know, McDonald's, Google, uh, Facebook, all of those companies that have been kind of at the forefront of innovation uh, have really been one of the leading design uh, inspirations for us to figure out how we want to put our office together. So what you're doing is is uh, you're creating the employee experience. You're creating a community. Uh, do people want to go home at night? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, that's one of the things. So we we serve breakfast, lunch, and dinner um, for free to all of our employees. Wow. And one of the questions, you know, that I get a lot is, you know, can I stay for dinner? Uh, and, and we really promote that. We love having people there, you know, sharing knowledge, building that you know, experience. And so we are 24-7. And so, you know, we have a lot of people coming in and out of the building. But people love it there. You know, we all, we just started a hybrid work program where we're letting people work from home a few days of week. And, you know, we've been tracking the numbers. And it's pretty funny because the first thing we did when we rolled it out was people saying, do I have to? Can, can I come in the office? Am I still allowed to be there five days? <laughs> that is week? like the antithesis uh, of everything you're hearing. People don't want to go in the office. And you've created an environment where people say, I don't want to work remote. I want to come in. I want to yeah, make the it, commute. I want to put it's, on clothes. It's phenomenal. <laughs> it, it it really is. And it's, you know, it's a testament to the, the office that we built, the culture that we have there. Uh, that is the, where the community is. It's the hangout center um, for a lot of people. They've built their friendships there. And that's what helps us, you know, keep people engaged, keep people interested. And as I said, get that community and that employee experience. It was essential for us to do that because that's how, again, how I said before, we get the best talent by doing that. And then that allows us to work with you know very high-end clients that have really high-end expectations. And we can match that very, very well um, without having you know some of the more difficult experiences that sometimes you hear with outsourcing. All right. So I don't want to, I'm going to go on two different tracks here. 
I don't want to forget what they are. So I'm going to mention uh, two words. They both start with C. One is cult and the other is cost. So let's talk about cult first. I'm almost thinking you're creating this cult that people want to belong to. Uh, it's a, it, it sounds like almost a cult like experience at work is, and I, and I don't believe cult is a dirty word. I wrote a book titled cult is the customer or cult of the customer. And it's like the culture you create. And it sounds to me like you've done a magnificent job of doing that. Yeah. You know, I think some of the, the, you know, the proof of that is, you know, we have a lot of our, uh, you know, team defending us. So there's, Whenever somebody has something, you know, that maybe they didn't like or wasn't, uh, you know, uh, experience that they wanted to have, you know, uh, we see all the time on social media, which is where we, you know, advertise a lot, attract people where somebody say, you know, hey, something happened or something I didn't like this, you know, you will see probably 50 different comments um, from people that worked with us or used to work with us defending us saying the truth about what really goes on there, how we treat people what type of experience they have. And to me, there's there's just no better proof than that uh, is having a team that's there to defend you um, and can really speak the truth about what happens here, which is a, you know, a really unique experience. Well, I will warn you that even the best companies like Disney, they have their naysayers out there. They have the people that left, course, maybe people that didn't quite make the grade and you had to let them go. They're the ones that are going to try to, you know, uh, poke holes in this incredible experience that you've created. Uh, but I hope it doesn't happen. But just know when it does, you're in good company. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. All right. Now, cost. Uh, you created this incredible experience. You, you're hiring the best people. My guess is that if I'm a company that decides to look at different companies that do what you do, and I'm going to outsource some of the processes that we have, or maybe even my customer support, I'm going to probably have to pay a little bit more to do business with you. Is that right? Yeah, I think uh, my my partner, Jose, has a great line, and he says, quality as a price. Uh, and, and we really do believe that. I think when a lot of times people have this misconception of what that price really is and what that price means to them. First off, our, our offices are located in the Dominican Republic in Santo Domingo, and we just opened in uh, Bogota in Colombia as well. So we're certainly cheaper than uh, U.S. rates, but we don't pride ourselves on that. We don't we don't talk about cost and being you know a, a cheaper cost provider when we ever talk with prospects, right? We talk about what are you trying to build? What's the experience you want to have for your customers? And when you really look into it, one of the reasons we're actually able to not charge huge amounts more um, than other competitors is because of that attrition and our low attrition levels make our recruiting costs quite minimal, our retraining costs very small, and the other costs that we have. And so we're able to balance both of those really, really well. And I think our clients ultimately have realized from working with us that maybe paying a, a slightly higher face rate ultimately is going to drive more value for their business than if they were to, you know, go with a, a cheaper provider. And a lot of the times what we will tell them is, you know, if, if cost is your only, you know, point that you're looking for, then we're probably not the best solution for you. We encourage you to go off and try somebody else and let us know the experience. And I cannot tell you how many transitions we are doing from clients that maybe didn't have the best experience because they were only looking for the lowest cost provider. They had a huge impact on their customers, their reputation and who they are, and then have come to us to help repair that. Um, and so that's kind of one of the biggest things for us in figuring out, you know, we're about value, uh, yep. not just pure dollars. Well, you remind me of one of my favorite quotes uh, from the great Aldo Gucci of Gucci, the retail store, high end. And that is quality is remembered long after price is forgotten. And I'll add another quote from Zig Ziglar, who always used to uh, handle a sales objection with, don't you think you ought to pay a little bit more than you thought it was going to cost than a little bit less than you should? So yep. <laughs> I love those quotes. Totally, totally agree. And I think our clients that we work with get that. Uh, and they are the, you know, these are fast growing, scaling businesses and they rely on an amazing customer experience because in today's world, 
know, that is one of the last frontiers where you can be competitive. Price is is very close, um, you know, and, and are coming closer together. But having an amazing customer experience truly can differentiate a brand from its competitors. Yeah. And it's obvious what's driving that amazing customer experience for your clients' customers is that you've got an amazing employee experience. We are out of time. And I always ask one final question, the one thing question. So what's that one last thing, that one last nugget of information that you want to share with us before we leave today? Yeah, I think one of the things I've been pushing with a lot of uh, companies that we've been talking to is give the customer experience people at your company a seat at the table. They mm. are so critical to designing product, how things should flow, what what's working for customers, what's not. And too often they're excluded from those conversations. And if you just had someone sitting in the room at the table, it's so impactful what you would learn and what you could hear. So love to see more companies do that. And I think you're already seeing that with amazing brands. So that, that would be exactly what I have to say. Wow. For the I love that. I love that. And by the way, one of the ways that will wake a company up and get them to want to do that is for some executives to spend a day or two on the front line with the support people, totally. with the ones that are totally. and realizing, oh my God, these people have an incredible amount of information they can share with us. They're hearing firsthand the problems. They're also hearing the accolades. They're also hearing what's working. And they're also hearing suggestions because let me tell you, I know plenty of customers give some suggestions, some <laughs> not so good, but, but many of them oh, yeah. are, and it, it's worthwhile. Well, Alex, this has been a great interview. Thank you so much. Uh, you've given us some amazing insight as to how your company is so successful. And I think any company can learn from the ideas that you shared today. So thanks so much for being here. Thanks so much for having me on. Really appreciate it. All right, that wraps it up. Another interview on Amazing Business Radio. We will be back next week, and I promise you it will be just as good. So please come back. And until that time, this is Shep Hyken reminding you to always be amazing.